Dear children, today we will learn about drugs, drug target, interaction and types of drugs. Chemical substances of natural or synthetic origin which are used for curing diseases and reducing suffering from pain are called medicines or drugs. In other words, drugs are chemical substances of low molecular masses. These interact with the macromolecular targets like carbohydrates, proteins, nucleic acids and lipids to produce a biological response. If the biological response is therapeutic, that is curative and useful, these chemicals are called medicines and are used for the diagnosis, prevention and treatment of diseases. If however, during diagnosis and prevention of diseases, a drug is used in doses higher than those recommended by doctors, it acts as a potential poison. The branch of chemistry which deals with the treatment of diseases using suitable chemicals is known as chemotherapy. Students, now we will define drug target. Biomolecules or biological macromolecules such as carbohydrates, proteins, nucleic acids and lipids are called drug targets because drugs usually interact with these drug targets. Let us now learn about medicinal chemistry. Students, medicinal chemistry deals with the design and synthesis of drugs or medicines based on an understanding of how these work in our body. Students, now we will discuss classification of drugs. Drugs may be classified in a number of different ways. Let us discuss some of these one by one. On the basis of pharmacological effect, as the name suggests, this classification is based upon the pharmacological effects of the drugs. It is more useful for the doctors because it provides them the whole range of drugs available for the treatment of a particular disease or infection. For example, analgesics reduce or kill the pain while antiseptics either kill or arrest the growth of microorganisms. On the basis of action on a particular biochemical process, this classification is based on the action of a drug on a particular biochemical process. For example, allergy can be caused in number of ways. The drugs that are used to control allergy are called antihistamines. All antihistamines inhibit the action of histamines which cause inflammation in the body. On the basis of chemical structure, Drugs have also been classified on the basis of their chemical structures because drugs having common structural features have similar pharmacological activity. For example, all sulfonamides having the common structural features as shown on screen are mostly antibacterial on the basis of molecular targets. This classification is based upon the type of the molecular target such as carbohydrates, proteins, nucleic acids and lipids with which the drug interacts. This is the most useful classification for medicinal chemists. These macromolecules perform various functions in the body, for example, proteins which act as a biological catalyst in the body are called enzymes. Proteins which are crucial to communication system in the body are called receptors. While proteins which carry polar molecules across the membranes are carrier proteins. Nucleic acids have coded genetic information for the cell and lipids and carbohydrates act as structural materials for the cell membranes. However, today we will discuss only the interaction of drugs with enzymes 
and receptors. Students, now we will discuss how do drugs interact with targets. Enzymes as drug targets. In order to understand the interaction between a drug and an enzyme, it is essential to know how do enzymes catalyze the reactions. In their catalytic activity, enzymes perform two major functions. Let us discuss them one by one. The first function of an enzyme is to hold the substrate molecule for a chemical reaction. The active sites of the enzymes hold the substrate in a suitable position so that it can be attacked by the reagent effectively. The substrate molecules bind to the amino acid residues of the enzyme through a variety of interactions such as hydrogen bonding, van der Waals interaction and ionic bonding as shown on the screen. These binding forces should be strong enough to hold the substrate long enough so that the enzyme can catalyze the reaction but weak enough to allow the products to depart after their formation. The second function of the enzyme is to provide functional groups which will attack the substrate to carry out the chemical reaction. This function is carried out by some other amino acid residues of protein present on the active site of enzyme. These provide free amino groups to attack the substrate and bring about chemical reaction. If the amino acid serine is present nearby the substrate held on the active site, then its OH group is free to act as a nucleophile in the enzyme catalyzed reaction. Students, look at the free functional groups that is OH of L serine, SH of L cysteine, COOH of L aspartic acid, phenyl ring of L phenyl alanine, and heterocyclic ring of L histidine, which can participate as nucleophile in enzyme catalyzed reactions. Part of the amino acid which is enclosed in the box is involved in the formation of the peptide bond in protein molecules. How do drugs interact with enzymes? Drugs which inhibit any of the two activities of the enzymes that is to hold the substrate molecule for chemical reaction. The second function of the enzyme is to provide functional groups which will attack the substrate to carry out the chemical reaction and are called enzyme inhibitors. Enzyme inhibitors can block the binding site of the enzyme and prevent the binding of substrate to active site of enzyme and hence inhibiting the catalytic activity of the enzyme. How do drugs prevent attachment of natural substrate on active site? Drugs inhibit the attachment of natural substrate on active site of enzymes in two different ways. There is a competition between chemical constituent of the drug and the natural substrate to attack the active sites on the enzymes. Drugs which compete with natural substrate for their attachment on the active site of enzymes are called competitive inhibitors. It means drugs inhibit or block the attack of the substrate on these active sites. Some drugs, however, do not bind to the enzyme's active site but bind to a different site in the enzyme which is called as allosteric site. This binding of the drug 
at the allosteric site changes the shape of the active site of the enzyme in such a way that the natural substrate cannot recognize it so any change in the shape of the active site in the enzyme will inhibit its combination with substrate if the bond formed between the enzyme and the drug that is the inhibitor is a strong covalent bond which cannot be broken easily then the enzyme is blocked permanently the body then degrades the enzyme drug complex and synthesizes the new enzyme now we will discuss receptors as drug targets receptors are proteins which are crucial to the communication system in the body majority of these are embedded in cell membranes in such a way that their small part possessing this active site projects out of the surface of the membrane and opens on the outside region of the cell membrane let us now learn how do receptors transfer message to the cell in the body the message between two neurons and that between neurons to muscles is communicated through certain substances called chemical messengers the messengers are chemical compounds received at the binding site of the receptor protein in a chemical messengers nu accommodate karan lai receptor protein di binding site di shape thodi jehi change ho jandi hai this brings about the transfer of message into cell thus messenger gives the message to the cell without entering the cell after the transfer of the message the chemical messenger departs and the binding site of the receptor protein returns to its original shape there are two types of chemical messengers these are hormones and neurotransmitters hormones hormones are the group of biomolecules jo ductless endocrine gland which produce hunde han ਇਹ ਬਲੱਡ ਸਟ੍ਰੀਮ ਵਿੱਚ ਡਾਇਰੈਕਟਲੀ ਐਂਟਰ ਹੁੰਦੇ ਹਨ ਅਤੇ ਬਾਡੀ ਦੇ ਡਿਫਰੈਂਟ ਪਾਰਟਸ ਵਿੱਚ ਟਰੈਵਲ ਕਰਦੇ ਹੋਏ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਸਾਰੇ ਰਿਸੈਪਟਰਸ ਨੂੰ ਐਕਟੀਵੇਟ ਕਰਦੇ ਹਨ ਵਿੱਚ ਰੈਕਗਨਾਈਜ਼ ਥੈਮ ਫॉर ਮੈਸੇਜ ਟ੍ਰਾਂਸਫਰ ਐਡਰੇਨਲਿਨ ਜਾਂ ਐਪੀਨੇਫਰਿਨ ਹਾਰਮੋਨ ਸਟ੍ਰੈਸ ਜਾਂ ਡੇਂਜਰ ਦੀ ਸਿਚੁਏਸ਼ਨ ਵਿੱਚ ਐਡਰੇਨਲ ਮੈਡਿਊਲਾ ਵਿੱਚੋਂ ਰਿਲੀਜ਼ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਹੈ ਇਟ ਪ੍ਰਿਪੇਅਰਸ ਦਾ ਬਾਡੀ ਆਫ ਬੋਥ ਐਨੀਮਲਸ or humans to perform physical exercise and to bear the stress second chemical messenger is neurotransmitters nerves transfer message through neurotransmitter these are small molecules such as acetylcholine dopamine and serotonin these bind to the active sites on the surface of receptor proteins that is the target for a very short time to transfer message to it and depart quickly after transferring the message the receptor then forwards the message inside the cell after leaving the active site of receptor neurotransmitters undergo degradation and lose their capability to transfer message in other words unlike hormones they are quickly deactivated the degradation products of neurotransmitters go back to the nerve endings to form the active messenger again and thus the cycle of message transfer can be repeated again there are a large number of different receptors in the body which interact with different chemical messengers these receptors however show selectivity for one chemical messenger over the other because their binding sites have different shapes structures and amino acid compositions students role of drugs are to block the entry of the messenger 
on the active site present on the receptor proteins. How do drugs reach specific targets? Receptors are specific in nature and one receptor may not accommodate all chemical messengers. This property helps in explaining the action of the drug. The different receptors which interact with one specific chemical messenger differ slightly in their binding sites. For example, there are two types of adrenergic receptors called alpha adrenergic receptors and beta adrenergic receptors. Both these receptors differ slightly at the structure of their active sites but still can bind epinephrine which is a hormone and acts as messenger. Therefore, it is possible to design drugs which can bind better with one type of adrenergic receptor than the other. Another important point about receptors is that they are not evenly distributed in the body. For example, heart has more beta than alpha adrenergic receptors. This means that a drug which has been designed to interact with beta adrenergic receptors will block the entry of messenger hormone epinephrine to beta adrenergic receptors. So, drug will act on heart rather than on tissues which are rich in alpha adrenergic receptors. Drugs that bind to the receptor site and inhibit its natural function are called antagonists. These are useful when blocking off messages required. On the other hand, drugs which mimic that is imitate the natural chemical messengers by switching on the receptor and are called agonists. These are useful when there is lack of natural chemical messengers. Children, do you know why do drugs cause side effects? Side effects are caused when a drug binds to more than one type of receptor. For example, some antidepressant drugs bind to serotonin receptor. Side effects can arise if the drug interacts with histamine or acetylcholine receptors or if the degradation product of the drug is also biologically active and interacts with some other receptors. Types of drugs Antacids these are chemical substances which neutralize the excess acid and raise the pH to an appropriate level in stomach are called antacids. Overproduction of hydrochloric acid in the stomach causes irritation and pain. In severe cases, ulcers are produced in the stomach. Serious ulcers can be life-threatening and the only treatment is removal of a part of the stomach. Thus, the most commonly used antacids are weak bases such as sodium bicarbonate, a mixture of aluminium and magnesium hydroxide, magnesium carbonate, magnesium hydroxide gel and aluminium phosphate. However, excessive bicarbonate can make the stomach alkaline and trigger the production of even more acid. A major breakthrough in the treatment of hyperacidity came through the discovery that histamine stimulates the secretion of pepsin and hydrochloric acid. Therefore, the drug cematidine that is tagamet was designed to prevent the interaction of histamine with the receptors present in the stomach wall. As a result, less hydrochloric acid is released and the problem of hyperacidity can be solved. Renitidine, also called Zantac, Omeprazole, and Lensopyrazole have also been used as antacids. These also prevent the formation of acid in the stomach. Antihistamines, the drugs which neutralize the effect of histamine, a chemical substance released by certain cells of the body during an allergic reaction. Histamine responsible for the allergy in the body is present in rich amounts in the tissues of skin, liver, lungs and also in blood. 
histamine causes allergy that is skin rashes inflammation of tissues asthma that is breathing difficulties it also causes nasal congestion associated with common cold the drugs which interfere with the natural action of histamine by competing with histamine for binding sites of receptor where histamine exerts its effect are called antihistamine these are widely used for treatment of hay fever conjunctivitis that is inflammation of conjunctiva of eye seasonal rhinitis that is inflammation of nasal mucosa sneezing nasal discharge itching of eyes nose and throat nausea in pregnancy and post operative vomiting the antihistamine drugs which are widely used are bromphenaramine and terfendine diphenylhydramine cetrizine chlorpheniramine promethazine etc a natural question which comes to our mind is that why antihistamines do not affect the secretion of hydrochloric acid in the stomach the reason being that anti allergic and antacid drugs act on different receptors neurologically active drugs tranquilizers and analgesics are neurologically active drugs they affect the message transfer mechanism from nerve to receptor tranquilizers drugs which are used for the treatment of stress fatigue mild and severe mental diseases are called tranquilizers they relieve anxiety stress irritability or excitement by inducing a sense of well-being they are also essential components of sleeping pills tranquilizers are of many types and they work by different mechanisms for example noradrenaline is one of the several neurotransmitters which play an important role in mood changes if the level of noradrenaline in the body is low for some reasons then the message transfer process becomes slow and the person suffers from depression in such cases antidepressant drugs are used these drugs inhibit the enzymes which catalyze the degradation of noradrenaline if the enzyme is inhibited then the neurotransmitter noradrenaline is slowly metabolized and can thus activate the receptor for longer periods thereby counteracting the effect of depression in other words depression is reduced two important antidepressant drugs are apronazid and phenylzine clodiazepoxide and meprobamate are relatively mild tranquilizers and are used for relieving tension Equanil is used in controlling depression and hypertension. Some other substances used as tranquilizers are Valium and serotonin. Barbituric acid and its 5-5 di-substituted derivatives such as veronal, luminal, saconal, amytal and nambutal constitute an important class of tranquilizers called barbiturates they are used as hypnotics sleep producing agents analgesic drugs which reduce or abolish pain without impairment of consciousness mental confusion in coordination or paralysis or some other disturbance or disorder of the nervous system are called analgesics These are classified into following two categories non narcotic that is non addictive drugs narcotic that is addictive drugs non narcotic that is non addictive analgesics aspirin 2 acetoxybenzoic acid and paracetamol 2 acetaminophenol are the most important examples of non addictive analgesics Aspirin inhibits the synthesis of compounds known as prostaglandins 
which stimulate inflammations in the tissues and cause pain. This drug is quite effective in relieving skeletal pain such as that due to arthritis. Besides this, this drug has many other effects such as reducing fever, as antipyretic and preventing blood platelet coagulation. Nowadays, because of its anti-blood clotting action, aspirin is widely used to prevent heart attacks. Despite its popularity, aspirin has also a harmful side effect. Aspirin is supposed to be toxic to liver. It sometimes causes bleeding from the stomach wall and is thus a gastric irritant. Because of these defects, other analgesics like naproxen, ibuprofen, diclofenac, sodium or potassium are currently being used. Narcotic, which is an addictive analgesic, drugs which when administered in small doses relieve pain and produce sleep are called narcotics. However, in large doses, they produce stupor that is laziness, coma, convulsions and may ultimately cause death. Most of these are obtained from opium poppy and hence are called opiates. Opium contains alkaloids like morphine and codeine which are very effective analgesics. Morphine diacetate commonly known as heroin is the most widely used analgesic. These are chiefly used for the relief of post-operative pain, cardiac pain and pains of terminal cancer and in childbirth. However, these alkaloids are known to be habit forming. Antimicrobials Diseases in human beings and animals may be caused by a variety of microorganisms such as bacteria, virus, fungi and other pathogens. An antimicrobial tends to destroy or prevent development or inhibit the pathogenic action of microbes such as bacteria, fungi, virus or other parasites selectively. Antibiotics, antiseptics and disinfectants are antimicrobial drugs. Antibiotics An antibiotic is a substance produced wholly or partly by chemical synthesis which in low concentrations inhibits the growth or destroys microorganisms by intervening in their metabolic processes. Antibiotics are used as drugs to treat infections because of their low toxicity for humans and animals. Antibiotics have either sidal that is killing effect or a static that is inhibitory effect on microbes. A few examples of the two types of antibiotics are shown on the screen. Bactericidal, penicillin, aminoglycosides, aflocosin, bacteriostatic, erythromycin, tetracycline, chloramphenicol, antibiotics which kill or inhibit a wide range of gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria are said to be broad-spectrum antibiotics. For example, ampicillin, amoxicillin, chloramphenicol, vancomycin and afloxacin. Those effective mainly against gram-positive or gram-negative bacteria are narrow-spectrum antibiotics. Penicillin G has a narrow spectrum. If antibiotic is effective against a single organism or disease, they are referred to as limited spectrum antibiotics. Chloramphenicol can be given orally in case of typhoid, dysentery, acute fever, certain form of urinary infections, meningitis and pneumonia. The antibiotic Dicedazirine is supposed to be toxic towards certain strains of cancer cells. Antiseptics 
are the chemical substance which prevent the growth of microorganisms and may also kill them. Antiseptics can be safely applied to living tissues. These are used for dressing of wounds, cuts and diseased skin surfaces. Commonly used antiseptic Detol is a mixture of chloroxylenol and terpene oil. Iodine is a powerful antiseptic. Its 2 to 3 percent solution in alcohol water mixture is known as tincture of iodine. Boric acid in dilute solution is a weak antiseptic for eyes. Now that we have learned so far, let me ask you a question. Why do we need to classify drugs in different ways? And the answer is, drugs are to attack different targets which are the biomolecules from which our body is made. Moreover, the drugs also differ in action. Therefore, there is a genuine necessity to classify the drugs in different ways. I hope you have understood the today's lesson. I look forward to see you in the next class. Till then, goodbye.